Hello, this is Uncle Jim. Today I'm going to load, or at least prep, 223 for the first time. And I did a live chat yesterday explaining why I'm going to load for 223 now, even though it's not friendly for cast bullets. So there's a couple uh, things I'm going to try for the first time. One of it is uh, sizing on the Lee Classic Cast 4-hole turret press and see how that goes. I have the die set for blackout. Um, I I'm talking about sizing rifle cartridges, okay? And on the blackout, I have the Lee set. However, I use a single stage for uh, the RCBS dies uh, doing a small, small base die. And in this case, I just got the El uh, Cheapo Lee set, and they're beautiful. They're degreased, and everything's ready to go. On the brass, I have some old brass here that I decapped when I was uh, making 300 blackout brass, and I separated uh, the PMC into a bin, and so we're going to use that today. And the other first thing I'm going to try is the Lee resizing lube that came with the die set. And I'll tell you what, I'm kind of impressed with it. And one of the reasons is when it dries, it, it won't stick to the powder or anything like that. And I don't want to re-tumble these. I'm being lazy, okay? So these were tumbled just enough to uh, decap, and they're going to be good enough for this test and first loads. So I have a Ellie Wilson gauge here, which is awesome. And I've already sized a few and also prepped a few on the prep station, which I'll show you at the end of the video here. Uh, just to see how much trimmings needed and so in their instructions I'm following it by the book this time <laughs> they say to bring the ram up bring it all the way down to the shell holder and then give it a, a quarter turn or a third turn and I was like whoa uh, and also the turret press has a little play okay and this is what makes me curious about doing a rifle cartridge sizing on the tour press. And it works out great, actually. So what I did, it, you'll see the notch here. A, a full quarter turn would be right here exactly, because I started here on the shell holder. So this is under a quarter turn, and it's working out. So I did uh, five and numbered them as I went just to check them all in the case gauge. And so uh, let's, uh, let's do one here. And I believe all these are once fired. They look, they look like it, uh, just range brass and nothing's dinged up on the rims or anything. It looks like it's once fired. And the gauge told me it probably was because I'm only trimming a thou or two when I got to the, the prep center. Okay, so we're going by the book this time. <laughs> and on the Lee uh, case lube, it, it says, uh, apply sparingly, do not lube the shoulder. Well, of course, because you're going to mess up your shoulder bump which we're not doing uh, as far as just bumping. We're doing the whole case. Uh, use a cotton swab um, to do the inside of the neck and size immediately before it dries. All right. Now, here's what's interesting. I have my own homemade case lube. Uh, you know, everyone knows that, that one. And then that you shake and spray. And I use Unique a lot. And what I found odd was, after trying this, I'm like, hey, how much does this cost? It's double the price of Unique. Okay, exactly. 
a two ounce bottle uh, costs you the same price as a four ounce um, container of Unique. So there's that. I do like it because it, it dries and I don't have to re-tumble these because I'm trying to be lazy here. So I'll just squirt out a little bit on the Q-tip and we're going sparingly. And I was, I was kind of surprised and I'll tell you why. So I'm going to rub this around on the Q-tip here and use the spare. Okay, that'll be doing the next for a while. And then I'm just going to take a case here and rub it on sparingly like they say. I'm going to do a little bit right here, but not the shoulder. Okay, and it's already feels like it's drying out. And then right inside. Okay. And the reason I'm using this is because I want to load it with powder without it sticking. And I don't want to retumble this. We're doing a quickie. This brass isn't even perfectly clean. So uh, what impressed me was these dies are brand new. I degreased them. Uh, shot them with the non-chlorinated brake cleaner uh, and you would think you would put more lube on here The first couple times just to get the dyes kind of lubed, right? So I'm holding it down here for a minute It doesn't even want to stick whatsoever. So uh, I'm pretty impressed with that And so oh, I forgot to get a paper towel So anyway, I'm gonna wipe it all off Maybe I'll take the dry side of the Q-tip just to, because we're going to load them like this, okay? And when this dries, it's, uh, it's dry. There's no reason to clean it. I was pretty impressed. Now, before you use your case gauge, you want to make sure this is totally clean so you don't gunk this up. And we're going to try the min-max here. And I decided to go to go here on the cam over uh, because I, I don't want to be close to the max okay and I don't want to be under the min and so I'm kind of on the min side and that's perfect and then we're going to lay it on the table flush because that's how you do the gauge. A lot of people hold it with their finger. That's wrong when you're checking the case mouth. So we'll put it on a flat surface. And then I got my little homemade checker here to see. Now this one is, this one could probably be loaded without trimming, but we're going to trim anyway. Some of these were a couple thou over. So that's perfect to fall right out. I'm very impressed. Seems like the turret press isn't stressed out sizing at all. There's no stress. And um, very happy about that. So that's how these are coming out. Let me measure. I wasn't prepared here. Let me uh, show you what the length is. And then we'll go over to the prep station and trim this one. And I'll show you the difference. Okay, so, and like I said in the live chat, I'm, I have lots of ARs, so I'm not shoulder bumping. I don't have the extra die for just that. Uh, I'm doing them all because I have different chambers. 1.7535, okay? 1.753. All right, now we'll go over to the prep station. And this is how they are typical. I did two of them. This is how it's typically uh, going on. Uh, but I'm impressed with that lube. And, and this is, this feels dry. I don't think any powder, especially stick, isn't going to stick to this. Speaking of stick. <laughs> uh, so I'm doing it the lazy way and not, usually I'll do a huge batch, prep them all, trim them all, retumble them. But in this case, I got to know, so we're just doing it the lazy way with semi-clean brass. Okay, so the funny thing is, 
I have 11 turrets now and I had to make a new rack for 10 and now I've gone past the limit so I have to leave one turret on the press. The same thing goes with the trimmer holders here. I'm maxed out so I have to leave one on the trimmer or on the uh, prep station. <laughs> so I mentioned that in the chat. That was kind of funny. Uh, always make more room than you think you'll ever do. So um, I had to move this over, drill a little hole to put uh, that. That goes to this. So everything's right here. So uh, on here, we'll do our length. Outside, inside, chamfer. Uh, I have a primer pocket uniformer here because uh, the primer pockets weren't clean with this brass and that's going to make everything nice. And just in case, I have a stake remover here because some of the PMC had that, that plastic ring around it that was very hard to decap, which I mentioned in the live chat. So if there's uh, a few of them still have that residue and this will clean it up if it's in the way. Otherwise, this one will do it. So we got the Uncle Jim golf ball here. And this could be loud because I'm using a microphone to the phone. Um, so we'll see if this is very loud or not. And so we gave the dimensions beforehand. And I was also curious about what length this trimmer is going to cut them at. Uh, in the live chat, I mentioned that this, it's, I found this really odd. Never noticed it before. It says trim length 1.730 to 1.760. Oof, that's quite a variance. And, you know, these are pretty darn uh, dead on. So I was curious what the length is. Now, in the chat, I mentioned this. Uh, if you're too long, which is very rare, you can take a little off the nose. If you're too short, then you got a problem. However, if you're if you if you really want to uh, make them longer, it is possible to back this out because they're very friction fit, and that way um, you'll have a longer case. In this case, it's perfect. So, in the book, I, I think it said to trim to 1.750. And this is trimming a, a little bit longer. I'll show you that in a minute. I need my calipers again. I think this is doing 5.2, which is just fine. All right, and very minimal trimming on this. Uh, so that's, I, I was very happy with that also. All right, this might be loud. So on this one here, it barely did any. I just felt a little bit. And uh, usually it's just a hair more than that. Okay, uniform that primer pocket, and there's no stake in that one or residue. Uh, there's no stake or residue in that. Um, I have this out just to deburr the flash hole. And one thing I also did was I inspected every one of them to make sure there wasn't a stainless steel pin from tumbling in there. I made the mistake of um, the Frankfurt Arsenal tumbler comes with pins. I made the mistake of dumping those in with my good pins. They are longer and they can get stuck on both ends. Okay, they occasionally they're a little bit too long, and I'm still kicking myself for mixing them because my old pins were perfect. So now I gotta watch for that in a skinny case like this. So uh, this one is prepped, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, and and this only took a sketch. I should have done another one. One point seven five two. 
and that's what I'm getting. And I might get a, a 525. Okay, so it's trimming beautifully and it takes very little effort. They didn't stretch at all, being once fired or whatever. Whoever's gun that was, wasn't too hot because it was PMC. I'm sure on the NATO stuff, it'll be different. And so that's my little stupid video for today. I'm kind of excited. This is kind of fun, actually. So, uh, as far as bullets go, this is where my dilemma is. The only appropriate powder I have is Varget. And that was dedicated for 308. And I have these, like I said in the chat, I have these berries uh, jacketed, not plated, 55 grain. I have some factory seconds that look like they shouldn't be seconds. They're beautiful. They all weigh beautiful. Soft point, which looks like a Hornady, 55 grain. And I have these 77 grains, okay? Now, the right thing to do to save powder is use the 77 grains to start for the first time. However, I'm more comfortable uh, doing the 55 to start with because I know a lot of people's pet loads. It's pretty simple uh, for a 55 grain like this, like the Hornady or whatever. So, I'm going to waste powder, uh, but we're just going to do a few. And then I'll get the appropriate powder. I need to go down to the store and get 335 or whatever. Uh, that's good for 223. This is a nice looking match bullet. It's a factory second, but they are beautiful. So uh, this would save a lot of powder. All right. I hope you find this interesting. I would appreciate any comments. Um, I'm impressed by the turret press sizing a rifle brass. No stress, super easy. I was impressed with the bullet lube. It's not even sticky sizing those brass. And it's dry, so I can just load them and not worry about, uh, you know, any issues with the primer or powder sticking uh, in the case mouse. Until next time, thanks for watching.